Talisha Tarver from Virginia Commonwealth University on designing a webinar series to address data literacy needs of beginning researchers. What a great pairing. Talisha, take it away. Thank you. Give me just a second to share my screen. And everyone can see this okay? That looks great seeing your slides there. Okay, great, thank you. So thank you for your time and attention today. And yeah, that was pretty timely, the uh, pre previous presentation. I'm very interested in seeing the, the slides from it. Um, so yes, as Nina mentioned, um, this was a similar response that we had to some uh, questions that we were getting uh, from mostly faculty rather than students, but um, this was doing it within a program that the library already had in place. So the context for um, our project was um, the VCU libraries is basically two departments and they each kind of serve uh, two different uh, areas of, um, of the VCU campus. And of course, I'm in the health sciences library, which focuses on the medical and health sciences faculty, students, and pretty much anyone who's within that uh, purview um, do, doing research or assisting with research within the health sciences. But oftentimes that means uh, partnering and um, developing content with um, with librarians on the other on the other campus because there's a lot of um, interdisciplinary research that goes on that involves the social sciences. So um, I'm located within the research and education department within the health sciences library, and as it's it's basically a liaison role. And those of you who are also liaison librarians will know that a lot of our services are mostly trying to develop um, library. Uh, uh, library instruction that's integrated in the curriculums of our respective schools. And I'm with the College of Health Professions, which is Allied Health. So I um, already had some curriculum integration with um, trying to do library skills and, and resources and services within the context of their classes. Um, but that mostly still kind of stayed within the literature searching, searching databases, developing a search strategy, things like that, and kind of doing it at all levels. Um, with the, within the health sciences, um, the groups that I work with tend to be from undergraduate, bachelor's, all the way through PhD and everything in between. And a lot of these uh, are uh, incoming students who have been uh, professional working adults uh, for a while before they went back to school. So they're kind of like getting back into the mode of being a student, as well as even becoming, you know, researchers at, at the beginning level or, you know, having to refresh their research skills. So um, we got to talking and thinking about ways of extending the outreach beyond just the curriculum integrated classes that we already had. And one of these areas that we do are these, on, we call them online workshops, and they're basically one hour webinars that we offer usually around lunchtime, but we have varied the times based on feedback. Um, but it, as, as a way to go even further and give everyone an option that's a little more um, easier access, like, you know, with, at their own time, if they register for the webinar, they can get a recording of the webinar afterwards and review the content and um, kind of like introduce them to other resources that we may not be able to focus on during class time during any one shot class instruction. And the first attempt we had at this was a re um, a webinar that I developed called Finding Health Statistics Online. And I partnered with a, a librarian on the other campus um, who focused on um, health disparity statistics. And they and I went, uh, would get together and uh, host this webinar. And this webinar tends to be very popular, uh, well attended. Um, there's usually a lot of good positive feedback as to like showing showing anyone. And it's it's pretty much a general, a more general audience. We have to make sure that this content is, is more generalized than it is within our instruction, <clears throat> our focused instruction to um, like seeing re research guides that we've created, lib guides that kind of house a lot of these resources that are linked together in one place to make it a little easier for uh, researchers at all levels to access what they need. So with that in mind, with that context, we uh, sought to create something that would uh, address data literacy, a problem that we were seeing with data literacy with a lot of beginning researchers. And this came from feedback, you know, we didn't do a formal needs analysis, it would be good to do so, of course, um, but mainly just from uh, uh, faculty that I worked with within these curriculum integrated uh, courses that I would uh, teach, a lot of them would note, um, I mean, a lot of these uh, students, uh, regardless of what level they're coming at, uh, seem to have a lack of competence with just uh, approaching the topic of just not just data analysis, data gathering understanding data management, things like that. So um, whenever they would take research methods courses, they would 
they would just notice a lot of, um, I guess, trepidation. And, and again, a lot of this wasn't terribly defined, unfortunately, but it, you know, there was, they did kind of note it was mainly just seemed to be a lack of confidence. So our research data librarian, who's here with us, um, was very helpful in uh, illuminating a little further what they needed to know, what, what the knowledge gap still seemed to be. And this came from regular consultations and also instruction that they offer uh, through another series that the library hosts called Advance Your Research. And one of these, uh, one of these uh, videos within the series was uh, introducing the concept of secondary data as a way to introduce what is a data set, uh, what goes into data, how you can use secondary data that's been collected already to um, inform your own research and to kind of help um, inform your own research questions, uh, refine them, define, you know, see what's been studied and what you can, uh, what you can glean from a research data set that's already been collected and as a good way to introduce, introduce core concepts. So what our research data librarian noted was that even with this um, adventure research series, the, it seemed to be a little more PhD focused. So like it could be even more simplified in some way. And from that, um, I surmised that it, you know, therefore, you know, something like a one hour webinar that just ba that basically reintroduces these concepts and then we can move forward if necessary. Um, with with consultations, maybe within courses that we create or, you know, informing our courses that, that are curriculum integrated, uh, but really just to have some sort of like um, triage, like a first point of just introducing basic concepts to help get, help uh, students get that confidence that they need to, when they approach, when they get into their research methods courses. So this is the identified need based on that feedback on that on those conversations is just like really kind of we wanted to focus the content on let's just introduce them to the idea of secondary data so that they can see a data set and look at the you know what we call the anatomy of a data set we're health sciences librarians so we're thinking about it like that just giving them a breakdown of the, th the types of things that are in a data set and then show them kind of get them thinking uh, we can't introduce this within a webinar necessarily obviously but we can at least uh, lay some groundwork for them to start thinking strategically about how they can use data to kind of inform research questions or see what research questions they can glean from something that's from a secondary data set so with that in mind, um, I got with the, the supervisor of our department, of our research and education department, who uh, helped me get the, the setup, the, uh, you know, the, the LibCal link and everything together for a webinar to schedule it within our webinar series for the fall semester. <clears throat> Um, did a trial run with uh, the other librarians in my department so that they could offer some feedback and, you know, look at the things like the assessments, the polls, things like that, that I would do to make the webinar interactive and also look at the content and make sure that it was uh, simple enough to and, and within the purview of a one hour webinar. So um, the content was, uh, was advised through our research data librarian, again, kind of helping design the content, make sure that it stayed within very specific objectives. Um, and a little background about me, I'm still, I'm in the process of finishing up a master's in education. So I'm able to kind of start thinking about things like educational frameworks and ways to kind of help um, help people with their cognitive load, for example, when they kind of look at these webinars and making sure that I don't overdo it, not with content, but also with how I present the information. So that uh, led me to create objectives that were known as action-based objectives. Each action, each objective would be followed by a particular action that the learner would then participate in to help reinforce the, the principles that I wanted to uh, point out in this webinar. <clears throat> and then, of course, the feedback from the other librarians that helped with a lot of like, you know, mainly the technology, like the Zoom technology with polls and breakout rooms and things like that to make sure that flowed smoothly. So in order to make this as simple as possible within the time allowed, we just we're going to focus on a single resource. So in this case, the Inter-University Consortium for Political and Social Research. So the reason why is because even though we're health sciences, again, we do, uh, there is a lot of uh, interdisciplinary collaboration within the researchers on both campuses. Uh, and there's a lot of health sciences information that can be gleaned uh, within this, the ICPSR. So it's also um, a good, uh, the way it's broken down and the way it's structured is that it has an interface that can help um, help you like just kind of find data, uh, like look at look at things and kind of do it in a basic search strategy, do, do, do basic searches. Uh, you can browse by topic, you can browse in a, a search box, things that would be, you know, interface um, things that would be familiar to most searchers. 
Um, it also would help us reinforce uh, using our research guides um, to find some of these resources. So again, kind of um, helping to, I guess, market, uh, get people thinking to like, well, you know, make sure you use the library, look through the library's uh, uh, website, look through our research guides, because it also can facilitate a sort of um, like serendipitous discovery. It's like you're, you're off to find one thing and then you notice that we have something else that may be useful as well. So there's a lot of these guides that we do kind of want to make sure people are aware of, uh, can also answer a lot of questions preemptively. So it kind of, we were gonna, uh, the structure of the webinar kind of reinforces that, uh, that method. And um, <clears throat> finally, just from using this one resource, just kind of be able to go down and note what you can find within the data set. And then at the end, be able to see where to go from there. I mean, obviously we can't cover that, but it at least gets them thinking as to how they might be able to apply it once the webinar is over. So uh, that being said, um, we had a defined goal at this point, equipping beginning researchers and understanding that these are gonna be people at all levels. Maybe they've never done research before. Maybe they're in a research methods class and they just are a little scared, <laughs> not sure what to, where to go from here. So really just uh, equipping our beginning researchers with the tools that we have available to them through the library for finding and appraising a secondary data set for their own research. Three minute warning. Okay. So just this is just going to go over real quickly the con the content within the webinar itself. Obviously, these are the action based objectives where we're going to walk through and show them how to find the data, the guides, choosing a data set based on a topic that's through a poll, and then of course they're going to um, identify the different components. So this is an example of how it's uh, located in the guide. We're gonna, uh, they're going to follow along and find it this way. And then once we open up ICPSR, we're going to do a demonstration of uh, finding a particular data set and um, like the different ways you can find it, also browsing by topic. And then, of course, looking at these different components within the set itself. So, of course, the one, the two that I want to highlight the most with the time that I have left is kind of looking at things like the code book and documentation and also publications from that research that incorporated the data set, mainly because we wanted to, uh, this kind of gets into that critical thinking that they're going to apply after, after the webinar is over. So, you know, going beyond just the basic what's here and then it's like, then start thinking about, well, then what can you do going forward? So some of the activities that I was thinking about, uh, possible pre and post test, um, different ways that I can sort of evaluate and assess if people are really learning what we need them to learn from this webinar, or if it's still too advanced, maybe we need to rethink, uh, reassess um, how to approach this going forward. Uh, some sort of group activity that lets them think pair share um, of publications and looking at the code book to see um, you know, the transparency of the researchers, what, they, what is available through the code book and what types of information they can get from that data set, looking at some of this documentation. And um, yeah, and then also kind of like looking at other secondary data sets that are provided through the library. So again, like just again, that discovery of just like, here's one, but then be aware that we have other resources through the library available to help you with this stage of the research process. So this is when it's scheduled. We haven't done it yet, but right now we have six registr uh, registrants and that's good. I mean, that's actually good for one of our webinars. So from that, I'm just gonna look at the feedback we get from the, from the learners. Um, anyone else who may like look at the recordings, if they have some feedback to give us, hopefully they will, and see if that's something we can incorporate for a future webinar of this, of this nature. So um, I kind of rushed through it. So at this point, I will go ahead and stop for questions um, to make sure that there's enough time for that. Perfect timing, Talisha. Um, and thank you for that. Uh, I, we had a comment in the chat that those two sessions go back to back really well, one that's more broad and one that's more deep. So uh, on onto one topic. And so I think that's a, a great match. Audience, if you can uh, add chat to the chat or to the Q&A, we'll read them off for the recording. Um, and as the talking head, I'm going to uh, go ahead and start with a, um, a question for clarification, although I already know the answer. Sorry, Talisha. Um, can you give us an idea of the sort of assessment gap or assessed gap between um, the health finding health statistics and the introduction to data sets that was turned out not to be introduction uh, that were already in existence the AYR data sets talk and your uh, and the finding health statistics talk 
Right. So um, one, one of the main things that I do, especially in the health statistics one, is to define the difference between the two. And uh, I think that might have been one where, um, and that is a question we get a lot when I, when I do the health statistics we uh, webinar is like, how do I find the original data source? And so that is kind of like, they wanna know where, this, where these statistics came from, why, you know, why this interpretation, et cetera. So, you know, they are, a lot of our beginning researchers that take our databases are already in that mindset of thinking that way. And with the AYR, the feedback that I got was that it still seemed to be more for people who are experienced with looking at data or looking at data sets. And that's not always the case with um, a lot of incoming students at, at any level, but a lot of students as they're incoming, um, looking at, uh, you know, just being introduced to all these concepts, the idea of data gathering, and even just kind of like the idea that they could look at a publication who used this data set and looked at the research that came from this data set and then give them an idea of like, well, is this something I would like to study or does this line up with my, with my research question? So it's really the gap is like going from a research question to, you know, how uh, data can inform that question or even help revise that question. So it's, you know, that seems to be that leap where we're trying to design something that will help meet that need. Hope that answers the question. It did, thank you. Okay. And we have a couple that I think are gonna tie into uh, instructional design. First, how did you, are the students adults? And if so, how did you link andragogy or adult learning into your approach? Thank you. Um, we just learned about that. Um, yeah, so yes, they are adults. Um, these are mostly, um, again, mostly, I'm, I'm, I'm generalizing based on the registration information that we get. They tend to be um, working professionals who have kind of gone back to school. So they probably are already health sciences professionals, nurses, uh, radiation, radiologists, things like that, radiation sciences. Um, who are now uh, getting like a master's or the adult, or the, the PhD programs. And they're kind of coming in from like their minds. I mean, and I can sympathize with this as someone who's been a working professional now as a student, as a graduate student, it is a totally different uh, way to think. So um, with that in mind, you know, we just want they, a lot of that is coming in from that um, panic. I expect a lot of that lack of confidence comes from, you know, now I have to think a completely different way and I'm not sure if I'm doing it right, so to speak. So as far as like, uh, yeah, the, um, the adult learning. Um, so yeah, trying to hope I'm not trying not to repeat myself, but it, yeah, so it is trying to uh, kind of reach them where they are and recognize that they're going to need to get this information presented to them in, in a different way. So kind of like with the webinar, but also with each of our, and I see the one about action-based objectives, kind of like, you know, you know, incorporating that idea of action-based objectives that's going to allow them to learn it in the way that meets them where they are. So somebody may react to uh, looking up a data set, for example, somebody may react a little better to, uh, you know, the think pair share. So just trying to have these different ways to reinforce the content. So where they can get together and talk with somebody, where they can kind of get on their own and take a look at say the code book or like looking at the publications and get to thinking on their own of like, well, what are their research interests? Um, how does the, can they start seeing a little bit about how this might inform their research questions? So that was kind of where each objective has a particular action behind it, has a particular activity that I hope <laughs> to given the time allowed that I'm able to do with them within the webinar that will kind of help reinforce that objective, make sure that they that they meet that we meet the objective of that webinar. And of course, making sure that it accommodates um, this type of learner who's, you know, probably, you know, coming into being a student uh, after years away from being at school. Thank you. And you, you got the follow up question of can you talk about the action based based objectives? really well. Uh, thank you for incorporating both of those. It's perfect. 